Hi students, I'm welcoming you all to my second video on surface chemistry. In the previous video, we have got introduced to a good extent of surface chemistry. Hence, without a further delay, in this video, we'll be concentrating on the term called as adsorption. Well, if you could look at the screen, you have many chalk pieces. Now, pick the white color chalk piece and dip it into a beaker containing water which is mixed with the blue colored ink. Now dip this chalk piece for 20 to 30 seconds and then observe the change. Again observe the change. Then break the chalk piece into two pieces observe the change. So what we can see is that the blue color is present only on the surface of the chalk piece. Why? Because the ink has got adsorbed only on the surfaces of the chalk piece. I said adsorbed. Now students, what is the color of a sugarcane juice? Look at the pic on the slide. It is greenish yellow or yellowish green. Anyway, we are not here to debate on the color of a sugarcane juice. So let us move on to a bit easier question. What is the color of a sugar? At least now we have a only one answer that is sugar is white in color. But logically it was supposed to be yellowish green or greenish yellow in color. Is it not students? But how come it looks white? Now you'll be thinking something is really fishy with what I'm showing it here. Let us analyze this soon. To analyze this, we have to go to a chemistry lab. Now we are in the chemistry lab, students. Here in the big beaker, I have sugarcane juice. I'm going to transfer a very small amount into the another small beaker, to which I'm going to add water. The idea is just to dilute. Then add a pinch of charcoal boil it with a constant stirring. Then pour the solution, filter it very carefully. Now you are going to get a clear solution. That is the sugarcane juice which was greenish yellow in color has turned out to be clear and colorless. The reason is that all the color which is present in the sugarcane juice has got completely absorbed to the charcoal which we have used. That means the color has got completely absorbed. Now here comes the answer for the question which I've asked. Why sugar looks white? Because the sugar is crystallized from the colorless solution which we obtained after treating it with the charcoal. Students, in my previous examples, I've used many a times adsorption and a term called as adsorbed. Now it's a time to look into what is adsorption exactly. So adsorption is accumulation of particles only on the surface. For example, students, you look at the picture, you look at the picture, in which I have a green color solid substance in which the outer region is called as surface outer region which I'm highlighting is called as surface and these regions are called as bulk here is a gas molecule which is getting absorbed only on the surface look at this again the gas molecules are getting absorbed only on the surface they are not inside into the solid substance which is green in color. Hence again students, adsorption is a process in which the accumulation of a particles takes place only on the surface. Students when you are trying to understand the term called as adsorption, it is also very very important to understand adsorbate and adsorbent. Now look at the screen. One which looks black in color 
is called as absorbent and you can see as green color circles they are absorbed and this black color circle is giving the room for a green color substance to get absorbed i'm repeating it students the black color substance is giving a room for the green color circles to get absorbed on its surface now what do you mean the particles which get accumulate on the surface is called as adsorbate and the material on which the adsorption takes place is called adsorbent and right after this we are going to check what is the cause for adsorption adsorption is a spontaneous process meaning it has a natural tendency to occur by its own here in the beaker i have a water molecule the water molecule which is present here is called a water molecule which is present in bulk whereas the water molecule which is present here is called the molecule on surface now do you think both of them will experience a same force no isn't it let us check here is a water molecule which is pulled by all other water molecules in the surrounding all other water molecules in the surrounding hence the net force experienced by this molecule will be equals to zero the force is equal equals to zero whereas in this case the molecule experiences only a inward pull because we have a water molecules below it hence this molecules will have a net force which is not equals to zero net force which is not equals to zero that means the molecules on the surface have unbalanced forces or say residual forces this is the main reason for the adsorption to occur spontaneously in my life journey i clearly understood that the nature has been designed to have two extreme corners because for every good there is a bad for left there is right for top there is a bottom in the same way adsorption is not an exception for it the exact opposite term of adsorption is desorption assume there are so many gas molecules are adsorbed on the surface of a adsorbent if i start removing it by external means how does it may look like it will look like this technically desorption is removal of all the particles which are adsorbed on the adsorbent most of the times adsorption is confused with absorption to get rid of it there is a tray on the table containing red colored water from your point of view on the right hand side she is making the butter paper to fall on the red colored water while on the left hand side she is making the tissue paper to fall on the red colored water do you think both the papers are going to behave in the same way impossible on tissue the color is everywhere that is it has undergone for absorption whereas the butter paper has underwent for an absorption that is it contains the colored water only on the surfaces these two papers behave in a different way hence it also indicates that adsorption is different absorption is going to be entirely different students assume that this is an adsorbent it has been broken down into two zones one is phase 1 and the other one is phase 2 in the adsorption what happens is the adsorbate will be present only on the surface it is not getting in that is what i mean when you move on for a absorption what happens here is 
the particles will be present in the phase one as well as in the phase two. This again indicates that adsorption is different, absorption is different. Now let us analyze the difference between adsorption and absorption. I have told you many a times that adsorption is going to happen only on the surface or say interface. In absorption, the particles are present throughout the bulk and that too in a uniform manner. In fact, you all know many examples for absorption by this time. Still, silica gel absorbs the water molecules on its surface. The gas mask which is used in a laboratories or in a mining areas will be containing charcoal which absorbs all kind of gases such as oxygen, uh, nitrogen, poisonous gases such as HCN, CO, etc. Example for absorption is calcium chloride when it comes in contact with the water it undergoes for absorption. When ammonia is passed into the water it will also undergo for a absorption. Here is an one more important term called as sorption. In some processes what happens is in the beginning they start behaving like adsorption but over a period of time they undergo for absorption and this kind of phenomenon of simultaneous occurrence of both adsorption and absorption is called as sorption. For example here I have a chalk base and in a beaker I have a blue colored water to which preferentially I am going to take a white chalk base, I am going to dip it in the beaker, one chalk base I am going to keep it for 5 minutes and the other one I am going to keep it for a larger amount of time. The observation what I have made is the chalk piece which has been kept for 5 minutes add a blue colored ink only on the surface. But if the same chalk piece has been retained for 5 hours, the scenario is looking entirely uh, surprising. The reason is that the chalk piece has started its journey with the absorption but finally ended up with absorption. I mean to say the chalk piece over a period of time it has undergone for sorption. A couple of moments ago I was telling you that the absorption is a spontaneous process. In the meanwhile at the end of thermodynamics we have arrived at a wonderful expression to predict the spontaneity of a, any process which is called as gibbs helmholtz equation that is delta G is equals to delta H minus T delta S in which delta G is called as change in Gibbs energy. Delta G is called as change in Gibbs energy. So if the change is negative, that process is said to be spontaneous. Spontaneous. In case if the change is positive, the process is said to be non-spontaneous. And in case if the value turns out to be zero, that process is going to attain a equilibrium. And then we have one more term in the expression, one more term in the expression that is delta H. Delta H is change in enthalpy. If the delta H is negative, that particular process is called as exothermic process. Exothermic process. And if the delta H is positive, it is called as endothermic process. Endothermic process. Here we have T. T stands for temperature. T stands for temperature in Kelvin. Temperature in Kelvin scale. 
whereas this delta s stands for entropy entropy if it is positive process is said to be spontaneous spontaneous and if it is negative the process is said to be non spontaneous If it has a value of zero, the process will attain an equilibrium. Now we have to check the delta G value for adsorption, and then delta G value as well as a delta S value. Delta G for adsorption is negative. Delta H is also negative, and delta s that is change in entropy is also negative we have expected a entropy change to be positive but here what happens is the gas molecules when absorbed on the surface of a adsorbent its entropy decreases hence adsorption is favored only at a lower temperatures let us study type of adsorption there are two type of adsorption one is physical adsorption or physisorption and the second one is called as chemical adsorption or chemisorption sometimes it is also called as activated absorption let us move on to physical adsorption students you all know that when we are talking about a term adsorption there should be a adsorbate and adsorbent here this is an adsorbate and the black colored one is going to be an adsorbent so if the interaction between these two are found to be van der waals force of attraction then it is said to be a physical adsorption that is if the gas molecules or any atoms if it is held to the adsorbent surface by a weak van der waals forces such as london force dipole dipole interaction is called as physisorption whereas in chemisorption the bonding between the adsorbate and the adsorbent is going to be very strong that is it's going to involve strong covalent bonds in continuation with that we'll just analyze what are all the differences between physisorption and chemisorption physisorption involves only a weak van der waals forces in case of chemical adsorption the interaction between the adsorbate and adsorbent is going to be a strong chemical bond or say covalent bond the second difference is that physisorption is not specific it means that assume you have a gas mask in which you will be having a cartridge that cartridge will be having activated charcoal filled in it now this activated charcoal adsorbs all the gases it adsorbs o2 co2 co h2 hence the physics option is called as non specific in nature while in the chemical adsorption assume if you want to make h2o the only way in which it can be made is use h2 plus o2 hence it is going to be highly specific in nature the third difference is reversibility physical adsorption is reversible in nature because the adsorbed particles can be removed then and there but once the reaction is happened we cannot revert it back meaning once the h2o is formed it's very tough to drive it back and to get h2 and o2 hence chemical adsorption is irreversible the fourth difference is 
enthalpy of adsorption since the interaction between the adsorbed weight and the adsorbed bent is a weak van der Waals force in case of disorption enthalpy change involved is going to be very very less it falls between 20 to 40 kilojoule per mole whereas on the other side the enthalpy change is going to be huge because uh, it is going to interact with the chemical bond hence the change falls in the range of 80 to 240 kilojoule per mole when i was discussing the thermodynamic parameters i've just mentioned that the Adsorption should be done only at the lower temperature. On the other side, your chemical adsorption requires higher temperature for adsorption to occur. The sixth difference is activation energy. Literally, physics option doesn't require any activation energy. In a very minor cases, they are going to involve very very small amount of activation energy whereas the chemical reactions or a chemisorption involves a huge amount of activation energy the seventh difference is based on layered in case of physics option it leads to a multi-molecular layer meaning assume an adsorbent first set of adsorbent will come and sit on the surface after that second set of absorb weight will come and sit on the surface and again and again this process will be keep on repeating hence we call it as physics option is a multi molecular layer whereas the chemical absorption leads to uni molecular layer let us also analyze the similarities between physics option and chemis option both of them depends on nature of a gas. Now, what is this actually? Nature indicates whether they are polar or non-polar. Or on the other way, we can take it in terms of critical temperature. Critical temperature is a temperature above which gas cannot be liquefied. Meaning the gases which have higher critical temperature can be liquefied very faster and then the gases which can be liquefied faster get absorbed on the surfaces very very fast. The second similarity is both of them depends on surface area. If you increase the surface area, your absorption, I mean physical absorption as well as chemical absorption, both are going to get increased. After quite a long run, here I'm framing my first question for you all students. Look at the question. Critical temperature of H2, CH4, CO2 and SO2 are 33, 190, 304, 630 respectively. Which one will get absorbed to a least amount if you take a charcoal is a question. To crack this question, you should know a relation that critical temperature is directly proportional to absorption hence you all please guess the answer before disclosing it now the answer is h2 here is a special term called as occlusion probably you would have heard about reduction reactions in which we are going to use a combination of hydrogen gas along with nickel platinum and palladium Actually, what happens in this case is hydrogen is a gas and nickel, platinum, palladium are going to be a solid. Here, hydrogen gets absorbed on the solid. If you are absorbing any gas on the solid surface, it is especially called by a term collusion. In fact, this is what is the process which is going to occur in a gas mask. Now let us check out the factors affecting absorption of gas on solid. The first factor is surface area. When you increase the surface area of any catalyst, the rate of reaction is going to be more because powder catalyst provides larger surface area, hence increases the rate of absorption. And second and the third factors are nature of absorbate 
and nature of adsorbent polar adsorbent loves to attract more of polar adsorbate and the fourth factor is pressure if you increase the pressure the adsorption rate is going to increase and the last factor is temperature as i was telling you when i was discussing the thermodynamic parameter lower temperatures are more preferred than the higher temperature hence temperature is inversely proportional to adsorption